This is uh, Morten from Inkish. Uh, such a pleasure to be here with my dear friend uh, Nick Benkovic from eProductivity. Good to see you, Morten. Good to see you too. Uh, beautiful booth. Thank you. Yeah, we're very impressed, very happy with it. I mean, first time I met you, that was like when you became like that s startup with a lot of people working there, yeah. right? And customers, right? Yeah, I mean, the, it was sort of the week that we spun out of EFI. We became our own entity. We yeah. became an independent software company, and it's it's been a great ride for us so far. Are you uh, still in your beginning, or have you grown up? <laughs> I, I think we've grown up. I think many of the uh, systems that we needed in the back end, we took we took care of. Um, as a software company, we're continuing to invest. We're actually growing year on year, which is fantastic. So, so what you experience is that, that, let's say, some of the ideas about splitting up companies often that they can actually manage better because they have a clear focus on what they do. Absolutely, singularly focused on software, yeah. efficiency, workflow, you know, not having to think about the devices that go downstream or the RIP that's there, the DFE. We're thinking about software. How can we make the customer's business more efficient and feed the beast at the end of the day? When I met you last time in Indianapolis, you gave some examples of how fast you're also being able to develop new solutions by also collaborating with other companies, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the first one out of the gate was HP. That's working fantastically well. We recently announced the, the partnership with Eco3. Uh, they're a fabulous partner to work with. Great footprint here in Europe, developing footprint in the US. Um, the team is incredible. We've had our developers working together, sharing technology roadmaps, thinking about how we can benefit the customers in real workflow situations. Mm. And I mean, uh, as a VP for, product, for your product portfolio, one thing is that you have to manage the software that you do. But I guess that it's also looking about what is next and, and how do we get ahead of the leak uh, with everything you do, right? A absolutely. It's, many of it's thinking about the things that people aren't thinking about. I didn't know I needed it until I saw it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like the iPhone. Yeah. 20 years ago, no one would have thought of it, but today it's indispensable. We're looking at how do we develop the technology that people aren't thinking about, the problems they're going to face a year from now, three years from now, as the business speeds up, the market just speeds up. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you have time, but just behind us down here, the SIP4 is yes. uh, releasing uh, their new, uh, I think it's ver uh, version 18. Yes. Did you have time to talk to them? Oh, absolutely. And in yeah. fact, I'm uh, still the CFO of SIP4. Okay. So uh, okay. actively involved in SIP4, JDF is still a big part of what we do. Um, but in many cases, we want to take it beyond that. So the work we do with Apogee, for example. Mm. I, the reason I was asking was just because when I, I spoke to Rainer Posi the other day and, 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 and heard about how XML and JSON objects is now becoming part of the, of the SIP4 standard, I guess as a software developer, that must be like, okay, we can communicate directly with SIP4 compliant equipment, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, when I started with SIP4 20 years ago, XML was super and exciting, but today it's, it's the, how do I take XML and the legacy, but JSON into the future, and we're seeing more of that and more opportunities to build tighter integration. Mm. Um, you mentioned that you, of course, want to be ahead of the league. Uh, where, where, where do you see the mega trends? Not, not so much on the, let's say, not on the application level, but I mean, we start with the technology level. What are the, what are the big uh, buzzwords of technology right now? I think you know, hosting, cloud, you know, web enabled, um, and and honestly, ease of deployment and ease of onboarding. You know, the the challenge is we've got an aging industry. You know. The industry looks like you and me. We're, we're you know, 50 something year old employees that are aging out of the industry. How do we engage the next generation and building tools that allow easy onboarding, easy learning, guided experiences? Um, that's a big part of what we're investing in. And on an application level, I mean, you have, I mean, you have so much software within the productivity, but I think also you have divided into different segments, right? Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, if you look at our booth, we've divided quite nicely. We have the packaging at the far end, and we have print at this end, because they, there are some overlaps, obviously scheduling, data collection are an overlap, but the needs of a flexible packaging customer is somewhat different than someone who publishes books, for example, or prints books. So we've, we've sort of separated the business there, um, really so that we can get hyper-focused on the markets that we serve. Mm. And I mean, and then again, talking about what is the next step, because I mean, one thing is we talk on, on let's say, uh, easy onboarding and, and, and those kind of things. I was also thinking that 
for example, in Europe, I don't know how it's in the US, but when you have legislation about traceability on packaging, yeah. that must be something that a software company just loves, right? Absolutely. Traceability, thinking about carbon footprints, the yeah. partnership we've just done you know, with Carbon Quota, huge. I mean, more and more people are, are interested in it and being driven to it by their buyers. So thinking about that is, is a big piece. You know, as we go down market, you know, our Nubian product that we launched at the show, first time, um, being able to get an easy onboarding and have a customer up running live on an MIS in under a month, that's unheard of. Is that the, the one that came out of your acquisition with... Uh, the Thurston team. Yeah, precisely. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Thurston team was already well on the way developing that product. And what we were able to do was inject additional funds, yeah. additional resources, some of our usability expertise yeah. to build an even better product. Yeah, it's funny because we saw a, a very early demo when we were interviewing the good people from Thurston back in... Uh, I think it was labeled Expo in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, precisely. And it just also shows how how important uh, go to markets and the speed of development, how that also be becomes like a major important thing, right? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, leveraging the teams that we already had, the experience that they already had, uh, being able to think about the UX. You know, it's that it's that user experience. It's great that it's in the cloud. It's great that it's hosted. You know, it's a low cost, low deployment footprint. But how do I get an employee on board fast, get them productive fast? And in those smaller businesses, that's hypercritical. Uh, last question, uh, Nick, you have been on quite a few Drupas so far. Yes. Now, the, it's for a long time, it's been the smallest exhibitor you'll be working with, right? Yes. <laughs> how is it to be the startup and being uh, at the same time, a grown-up uh, here at Drupa. You know, it's 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 sort of being a thirty-year-old newborn um, in many respects. You know, we've got technology throughout our company, yet three decades old, that we've continued to modernize and invest in. But you know, many of the employees have been here since the beginning. So, being fresh and new, but having the luxury, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, and we're grateful for the fact that we have a huge install base and able to grow that. Yeah. It's a really nice place to be. Yeah, and Drupa has been good for you guys? It's been phenomenal. You know, I'll, it's interesting. Um, you know, we've, we've had the experience of the people walking up to the booth in the past years. You know, this is, you know, as I said, Drupa number seven for me. People walking up and saying, so tell me what you do. Today they come in and they say, I got a problem with my MIS. I have a scheduling problem. We, we have no visibility into data collection. So they're coming here looking to solve problems and they're looking to solve problems now. So great engaging conversations about real business benefits. That's actually what I hear across uh, all uh, OEMs I talk to that. It seems that today customers are well more educated before they engage with an OEM. So they, I mean, kind of qualify the discussion before they enter, where maybe they were more in the search in the, in the past. Is also that you see generally, or was it just on a trade show? Or I, I think generally they are. I think you know the internet has sort of brought it home, for, especially from a software company perspective. They can go online, they can watch videos, they can see testimonials, they can see all the value. Download demo sometimes. Yeah, either, in many right? cases, yeah, yeah. and so this is really the confirmation. I know many customers have come here and they've got a shopping list. They've got two or three, four vendors that they want to come and see. And then they'll incidentally run into something else as they wander around the show. But it's very specific and targeted. And instead of coming for six, seven, eight days, they're here for three or four days. They see what they need and they're gone. Mm. You wish you were gone after three days, right? Absolutely not. You know, it's interesting. The, the weekend got a little bit quiet, but um, the energy, every morning we get here, customers show up, the team's always energized. So I'm loving it. I'm here till the end. Fantastic. Thank you, Nick. Great. Thanks, mate.